Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel MI Tutorials. I recently received this comment on one of my Power BI videos and it's a really practical scenario that many teams deal with. Basically, the user is saying that I have data tables that fetch CSVs from a shared drive, multiple users paste the files, but I want a way to monitor whether the files are being updated. I want to know the row counts, the date ranges, the last modified date without loading everything into the model. This is a great question. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to solve it step by step using Power Query. You'll learn how to build a monitoring table that tracks row count, minimum, maximum dates from columns like your order date or your cell start date or last cell date, etc. And even the files last modified timestamp all in one view. And if you have similar challenges or idea, drop it in the comments. I read each and every one of them and might turn your questions into the next tutorial. And as you can see here on the table that I have created here, I've got the file name. All of these are the Excel files that are stored on my SharePoint. This is the date that these files were last modified. I have obviously pasted all of these files onto my folder today. So that is why you're seeing the same date here. And I have the minimum date and maximum date of the order date column from these files and the row count, the number of rows that I have in each and every file. This makes it a great table for you to monitor your files on the SharePoint or in any folder for that matter. Now let's head to the Power Query Editor and take a look at each and every step and see how to achieve this. We start by using folder.files function to point to the directory where all our Excel files are stored. This brings in a list of files along with metadata like file name, last modified date and file content. Now please note that my data source here is OneDrive and that is the location that I have here. If you have these files stored on a SharePoint or any other location, you might want to change this particular source. Step two, we're filtering only .xlsx files from the folder to exclude any non-Excel files that might be present. If you have CSV files in there, you might have to change the extension here from .xlsx to .csv. On the step three, we're using the excel.workbook function to extract the contents of each and every Excel file. This gives us a list of all the sheets inside every single file. On the step four, we filter down to just sheet one tab in each and every Excel file. Here, I'm assuming that all files have a sheet named sheet one. Again, you might have to modify this if your sheet names are different. On the next step, which is step five, we're extracting the actual tabular data from sheet one. Notice that we're not promoting headers here. We are treating the first row as the data. Now on step six, this is where the magic happens. We go into each sheets table and calculate the number of rows, the earliest order date, the latest order date, all wrapped in error handling to avoid crashing if a file has missing values or wrong date formats. If you're following along and learning something new, give this video a like. It really helps support the channel. In my Excel file, the date column is called order date and in your files, it might be different. So please make sure to change that accordingly. In step seven, we're now expanding the summary record into individual columns so that we can see them clearly in our final output. And in step eight, from all of the data that we have processed, we keep only what matters for monitoring. In this case, the file name, when it was last modified, how many rows it has, the minimum date and the maximum date. And then in the last step, let's rename the first column here instead of name, let's call this as file name, just to make it clear and avoid any confusion in our report visual. So now you've got a smart monitoring table that tells you exactly which files were updated, how many records they hold, and whether they are missing recent data, all in one view. This is perfect for auditors, analysts, or anyone who relies on others uploading Excel data consistently. So that's it guys in this particular tutorial. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. You've learned something new today. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more such Power BI tutorials.